I'm Andrew Levine, the CEO of Coinos Group, where we are obsessed with giving developers a decentralized platform that they'll love using to build amazing applications thanks to its free accounts, free transfers, and free smart contracts. Understandably, this sounds too good to be true. So in this video, I'm going to explain at a very high level how we accomplish this seemingly impossible feat. On Coinos, practically everything is a smart contract, and smart contracts are just pieces of code running on a decentralized network of computers. But as everyone knows, nothing in this world is free, including the execution of code on a computer system. The problem we have on decentralized networks is that there's no one in charge, like Amazon or Facebook, who can determine and charge a fee or simply eat the cost. Blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum solve this problem by allowing the people submitting transactions and requesting a smart contract be executed to add tokens to their transaction as a fee that someone else can choose to accept in exchange for processing that transaction and executing that smart contract. It's a pay-to-play model. Every time you want to do anything, you have to add tokens to your transaction and hope that someone will facilitate that transaction in exchange for the fee you included. This is actually a very efficient way of making sure that the system is sustainable because the people bearing the cost of running the network are the ones setting the fees and getting paid. But Coinos will employ a different model, which you can think of as a hold-to-play model. The currency of Coinos is coin, with a K, and every coin token that you hold will act as a kind of container for an asset called mana. Whenever you transfer tokens or execute smart contracts on Coinos, you'll use up some of your mana. Now we call it mana because it operates much like mana in a video game. Coinos will constantly be tracking the resources available and adjusting how much it charges users in mana for their transactions based on those resources. The more resources the network has, the more transfers it can process, the more smart contracts it can execute, and the farther your mana will take you. Because it distributes mana based on how much coin a user holds, we don't need a centralized authority to administer the system, and because the system charges mana based entirely on the resources it has available, users can only perform as many actions as the network is capable of handling. It's really about as simple as that, though. Of course, the technical details are a bit more, well, technical. Obviously, the people processing these transactions still need to be incentivized. And so that's why the blockchain will basically create new coin to do so. This also ties into our consensus algorithm, but both of these topics are outside the scope of this video. What's important to remember is that mana regenerates over time. So as you use up your mana, the blockchain will continue to generate and distribute mana to you and anyone else holding coin because it will almost always have some resources to spare. The sole purpose of mana is to enable you to use the blockchain without having to pay fees for every little thing that you do, which is why it's non-transferable. You can't transfer it to someone else or sell it in a marketplace, at least not without also transferring the coin in which it resides. Being able to create special kinds of assets like mana with unique properties and limitations that enable us to solve previously unsolvable problems helps demonstrate the powerful potential of smart contracts. In the case of mana, we give it these properties and impose these limitations because we want this asset to operate entirely in the background. You should be able to just use Coinos without even thinking about it. You should be able to use Coinos applications without having to worry about how much it's costing you or whether your transactions will be able to go through or not. It should just work and you should be able to hold on to every token that you buy. The only time we expect users to become aware of Mana is when developers use it to deliver an even better user experience by notifying users that they're running out of free transactions and should either decrease their usage and wait for their mana to regenerate or increase their coin holdings. Now, these are already great and unparalleled features, but we know from our unrivaled experience that developers and their end users still need more. Developers shouldn't have to require that their users buy coin just to start using their apps, which is why every coin holder will also have the ability to delegate their mana to other users. 
This way, developers will be able to onboard users into their decentralized application without having to pay for that user themselves and without forcing the user to acquire tokens. This is why we have no reservations about claiming that Coinos will not just have the lowest barriers to entry of any blockchain out there, it will have no barriers to entry at all. All right, in this video, I wanted to give you a high level overview of how you build a fee blockchain. And I think I've done just that. I'm sure I touched on a number of concepts that have piqued your curiosity, like how we incentivize transaction processing through new token creation or inflation, and the nature of our consensus algorithm, which I'll be covering in future content. So be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on social media, and join our newsletter by heading over to coinos.io, where you can also learn more about the Coinos blockchain. Thanks for your time.